Great. Finally, we reach to the last item on our list, the closer. So, what is a closer? A closer is a function. Like any other Scala function, a closer may be pure or impure. It may be named or anonymous, but it is primarily a function. You might be wondering then why we call it a closer. There is a small difference. Let me explain. Let's look at this function definition. It takes your salary as input, then it calculates and returns your height, right? Have you noticed this P? What is that? That's the percentage of the height. But from where is it coming? I mean, we are not passing P as a parameter. We haven't defined P as a local value. P doesn't have any definition or meaning within the function. So what is P? P is a free variable for this function. We call it a free variable because it is not yet bound to the function with a valid value. The function doesn't know the value for P. Now, since you understand the free variable, let me give you a definition of a closer. A function that uses one or more free variables is known as a closer. That's the only difference between a function and a closer. A closer uses one or more free variables. That's it. What if you compile a closer? Let's try. Well, that's an apparent error. The compiler can't find P. So, we still have one pending question. Where will the compiler find the P? The answer is straightforward. The Scala compiler looks into the so-called nearest local lexical environment in which that function was defined and tries to find a binding. So, you can set a value for P anywhere outside the function. Let's define P and try compiling the function once again. It worked. The compiler detects that the function doesn't have a local definition for P and it is not even part of the parameter list. So the variable P is a free variable and the function is a closer. Then it starts looking for the P. It starts searching for P in the lexical environment. Since the compiler finds the P, it doesn't complain. Good. I guess you understand the closer, but that's not all about the closer. There are two more questions to answer. How does a change in the value of P impact the closer? And why closers? What are the benefits? Let me take these questions one by one. The first question has two parts. The first part is this. What if I keep changing the value of P? Which one is used? The answer is a straightforward. When you execute a closer, it takes the most recent state of the free variables. Let me show you that. I define the value of P as 10. Then I define this closer. Now if I call this closer, it should give me a 10% of my salary, right? Let me change the value of P to 20 and call the closer once again. I get 20% high. So the closer takes the most recent state of the free variable. Let me ask you another question. Is this closer pure? The answer is no, because the free variable P is a var. If the free variable is a val, the closer is pure because we know that val is a constant. It will never change and hence the function will give the same value for the same input parameter. That would make the closer referentially transparent and hence pure. So a closer may be pure or impure depending on the type of the free variable. The second part of the question is this. What if a closer modifies the free variable? If a closer sets the free variable, the changes are visible outside the closer. Let's test it. So P is 10. We call the closer. Then we check P once again. It becomes 20. So the changes made inside the closer are passed back as well. Okay, let's look at the most important question. Why closer? 
we learned that in functional programming, you could pass functions and return functions, right? Isn't it the similar thing as object-oriented programming? In the object-oriented programming approach, we move objects around. And in functional programming, we juggle with functions. Both are the same kind of things, isn't it? If you agree with this, you can easily argue that objects are more flexible than functions. Why? For certain use cases, objects are more flexible because objects carry two things, methods and data elements. Whereas a function is alone because it doesn't have any state or data item, right? So if we have a requirement where we need to pass a bunch of data elements or states along with a function, how will you do it? Do we have a facility to achieve that in functional programming? The answer to this problem is a closer and a free variable. You will need an example to understand this thing. Let's create one simple example. We looked at the get hike function, right? Let me give you a simple requirement. I have a list of employee numbers. It is something like this. Now, I want a function that I can apply to all of these IDs and get the hike for all of them. It should work like this. Possible? Well, you can't give a hike to an employee by just looking at their employee number. You should know their current salary and the percentage for each employee, right? Once you have that data, you can quickly compute their increments. Let's look at the code and try to understand that where is it getting that required data. Looks little complicated to grasp because we haven't learned Scala language yet. But I want you to focus on the last line. The last line is an anonymous function body. The get computation is a higher order function because it returns another function. Let me show you. The variable get hike is holding an anonymous function. The returned function takes an integer and gives a tuple of an integer and double. If we call this function with an employee number, it will give you the hike. If you pass an employee number that doesn't exist, you get an exception. No such element. And here is my question to you. Where is the get hike validating for employee numbers? Pause the video and think about it. Look at the code for get computation. We have E and P defined here. They are local values for the get computation function, right? But they are free variables for the anonymous function body in the last line. Now, here is the point that I want to make. The anonymous function returned from the last line is a closer. It uses two free variables E and P. When we returned it from the get computation, it carries the state of the E and P with it. So, get hike contains the data with it, right? Just like an object in the object-oriented world. When you start practicing functional programming, you will realize that closer and their capability to carry state is incredible. It saves you a lot of complicated and unnecessary code and simplifies your solution. Without the closer, you will end up writing a lot of code. That's all about the closer and elements of functional programming. Thank you for watching Learning Journal. Keep learning and keep growing.